Greetings duplicates and welcome to The Breach. To start off with today's episode we are going to introduce a new duplicate to the colony. This one is the Hermit from the Storyline trait. In the background I'll get the colony ready for me to be ignoring it for a few cycles while we go and concentrate on building the colony on the transporter asteroid. Well, Georges the Hermit has decided to join the colony. He's a pilot, so that'll be excellent for when we're going to explore further afield asteroids. But as with all new colonists, we need to get him running on the treadmills to improve his athletics. I had tied the Hermit shack into the power supplied by the two steam generators. That power is no longer needed, so time to tidy up a little bit. Forty-one cycles later and it's time to send Georges, our fearless explorer, out into the great unknown. Our priority for Georges is to get some toilets and wash and basins built. After that will be a bedroom and then a place to eat. But we're going to prioritise the bathrooms first because we don't want any accidents all over the place. It looks like I have space directly below the outgoing teleporter. Ah, yes, obsidian. I can't go through that, so uh, we won't bother trying. Sending George out to the new asteroid was part of a cunning plan to get him all skilled up, because he's going to be one of the main duplicates that I send to far-flung asteroids once I've got the space program up and running. At the moment, he's still fully skilled up into research to improve his skill-gaining ability. I want him to quickly earn a few skill points in excavation and construction. Well, this room will do nicely for a temporary bedroom for Georges. Our eating arrangements here will be a grand hall. And then we build two outhouses and two sinks to give our duplicate somewhere to go to toilet without uh, very polluted water everywhere. And the pitch pump will allow us to fill up the basins with water. Well, that's our initial toilet set up, and these will last us for quite a few cycles. Oh, 
if I hadn't uh, built those ladders, I could have probably had somewhere for George to sleep tonight. Oops, sorry, George. Ah, yes, this is important, making sure I have food that Georges can eat. We need to let him eat the nutrient bars that are available on this colony, and excellent fruit as well would be a good idea. And there's the bed constructed all ready for him next time he needs a bit of shut-eye. George doesn't have the skills to dig out of the biome through the abyssalite, but we can get him excavating as much of the area as possible so we can explore and see if we can see anything nice. One of the great things about the forest biome is obviously the oxyferns, which are nice, a passive way of converting carbon dioxide into oxygen but we do have a lot of oxalite present on this map as well so we can quickly do a lot of expansion without worrying about having to create our own oxygen always a good idea to make sure you collected all your data banks He's gasping for breath. It's probably going to be a good idea if I get him out of his atmospheric suit, really, isn't it? In preparation for thawing the duplicant out, we all build them a bedroom. George is going to excavate his first excellent fruit, so we can add that onto the consumables list. Well, we've uh, defrosted our friend from the Cryotank 3000, and we have another bunny. Well, I've spotted a gap in the Abyssalite, so I can get my guys digging out and exploring a little further afield. It's time to swap some duplicates. I'm going to send Ellie over to the new colony. Ellie benefited from the newer Vacillator early on in the playthrough to get plus 10 strength. But for developing the colony, the most important two skills are construction and excavation, which she has a good score in. So Banny's being sent back to the main colony. She can look forward to spending the next few cycles running on a treadmill. Then she'll take up her primary profession of farmer. We're going to skill scrub Ellie to reduce her morale requirements. I think Ellie's been wobbled around enough and has forgotten everything. And we have Ellie as a blank slate. We're going to give her improved carrying one and two. We'll get her trained up in super duper hard digging. So we can dig through obsidian and abyssalite. And we'll give her a single point in construction.
with these two duplicates, we should now have all the skills we need to do some serious excavation. Well, I'm not quite ready to start dealing with these two volcanoes yet, but I'll block in an area next to them. The plan is to use these two volcanoes to boil petroleum to make natural gas. But that might not happen until after I've been to space and been able to acquire some thermium. I mean niobium so I can produce thermium. You know what I meant. I haven't decided what style of petroleum boiler I'm going to make. I am thinking about using superheated steam to heat up the petroleum. But I believe it'll be a few more episodes before I get round to having to make a final decision on that. It's pretty cool seeing all your duplicates getting together and working on a project really fast.
one small project completed and now on to another one. We want to grow these bristle blossoms so we can make some berry sludge so when we get our space program up and running we have some food for the astronauts. This is going to be a little bit of a balancing act because we're feeding in 40 degrees water and we want to keep the plants between I think it's something like 5 degrees and 30 degrees Celsius. So getting these plants to grow is going to be a bit of trial and error. We're going to need to play around with how much cooling we're getting from the cooling loop. We're now feeding the plants with 40 degrees water. They're consuming it and therefore warming up. I built some extra piping to take half the liquid coming through the cooling loop and it's going to pass through granite pipes and hopefully we'll just chill the air in the bottom section of the farm just enough for the plants to grow. We'll just have to give it a few minutes to see how the temperatures equalise. Yeah, well that's a problem. All the plants are too warm to grow at the moment. We're going to improve the cooling by adding some radiant pipes. Just those double sections of radiant pipe work are dragging down the temperatures quite quickly. So we can turn the flow of water back on and see if this equalises out the temperature at below 30 degrees Celsius. Well, things seem to be working out now. We're slowly increasing the flow of water to irrigate the plants. And the final plant is also nearly used up all the stores of water that it had uh, accumulated when the other plants stopped growing. And here we are so close, the bristle blossom is about to flower. And now we can watch it go and be made into some berry sludge. Mm, I think this is taking too long. I bet it's gone to the juicer. Damn it. Ah, yes, the juicer is full.
Excellent. Our first load of berry sludge. Well, that's the end of today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the other side.